Have you ever wanted to draw high resolution images and graphics right into your terminal? Turns out you can using the Sixel standard all the way back from 1988. We're gonna check that out on this blue collar coder. I'm Jack Harrington at Jahur on Twitter. So what we're gonna use is a combination of iTerm2, which is a freely available Mac OS X terminal replacement, though I think you can go and get terminals that support this on Windows and other operating systems. We're gonna use that in combination with Puppeteer, which is a headless Chrome browser automation system, and React to go and basically paint whatever you want into your terminal using the skills that you already have. I'm really excited to bring this to you. Let's just go jump right into the code. So in this one, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. And I'm just gonna give you the code and the starter projects, and then you can kind of take them wherever you wanna go. So this is the repo that is linked to in the description. And all you need to do to get this set up is to install first this image cat, which is located at the root level. So I've already done the clone. I'm gonna bring it up in terminal and show you. So image cat actually comes from iTerm folks, and it does some important stuff when it comes to doing these Sixel graphics. The way that Sixel graphics work is it uses an escape command. And if you were not familiar with old school terminal stuff, escape commands are how we change color, how we move the position of the cursor. There's all kinds of cool things that you can do with escape commands, and you basically just do escape, and then there is some command code followed by some command parameters. And in this case, it's uh, escape, and I think it's P, and then a bunch of pixel data after that. This uh, standard actually comes from 1988, if you can believe it. So that's really kind of cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just show you how to do image cat right in the terminal. And I actually do that with this blue collar coder logo right here. So let me show how that's done. I've installed image cat in user local bin, just like it says in that readme. So I can just do image cat and then give it the name of a file. And there you go. There's my 600 pixel wide BCC logo. So any PNG you wanna drop in there with any bit depth you want, including alpha transparency, works just fine. So let's go into that directory now and try out some of these little projects that you can use as a starting point for your own commands. So let's try out Slack status first, since it gives you some indication of how this is gonna work. It's also the smallest. What this is gonna do is grab Puppeteer, and then it's going to launch a headless Chrome browser, get a new page. It's gonna to go to status.slack.com. If we click on that, you can see it's got this nice little table here of all the different Slack services. Then we're gonna wait for it. That's actually just gonna wait for the CSS to load. Then we're gonna get that block, that pound services block, that's an ID block that has all of the service st stuff in it. So we're gonna get that element and then we're going to screenshot that element and put it out to standard out. And then we're gonna close that browser. So why does the standard out thing work? Well, if we go over here to package JSON, we can see that we do this bin launch on start. So we need to build it first and then we start it. And then bin launch over here, just runs that compile file and then runs it through image cat and image cat takes as standard in if you don't specify a file name the image and then it outputs it so we don't actually have to go and create an intermediary image file so let's see if this works we'll go into slack status and then do yarn build and then do yarn start. And there you go. There is the current status of Slack anytime you want it. Now you can also, in each one of these, because there is a, a bin here, you can do a global add of this Slack status and you'll get a command line function called Slack status that you can run from anywhere and get your Slack status. And all of the projects are set up to work that way. 
So now one more thing before we move on to the next one. So you can also do yarn dash dash silent and then run it. And what you'll not get is the little preamble about how long this has taken a run and all that kind of stuff. So that gives you basically just a really nice clean output. Okay, so this is the one you'd wanna use if you wanna just go and get a piece of a web page and put it in your terminal. Let's say that you wanna go and do some SVG or some static HTML. Let's give that a try. The example for that is ThoughtBubble. So ThoughtBubble is structured exactly the same way. Let's go over to index. But in this case, again, we're gonna use Puppeteer, we're gonna specify some styles, and then we're gonna specify a piece of SVG. And then down here, we're gonna construct a page. We're gonna launch Puppeteer just like we did before, but in this, this time we're actually gonna do set content as opposed to going to a particular URL. And then we wait for that content ID, which is this div right here. Then we screenshot it again and close it out. So let's give this a try. Again, we'll build it. And then we'll do our yarn silent trick. Nice. So now I've got this interesting thought bubble. So what you can do with this is really fun because you can make iTerm completely transparent. Let's try that out. Let's see how this works. So now iTerm is completely transparent. I'm gonna drop that over in the corner. I'm gonna go bring back up Chrome and my image there. And now I can go and add that wherever I want. Nice, all right. So you can have all kinds of fun with that kind of overlay stuff. You can do a screenshot of that, whatever you like. Options are limitless. So let's get into React at this point and we'll go over to React to Sixel. And in this case, we're gonna do basically React server-side rendering. So we're gonna bring in React DOM server as well as React. The project is already set up so that you get uh, the JSX extensions. You can put in all the JSX you want. And then we've got a booter function that just does this render to Puppeteer. And render to Puppeteer basically just does everything it used to do, except it does this React DOM server and then gives it render to string and the app. So let's try this out. If it works, we should get a piece of SVG plus this H1 Go React app. Nice. And again, this is has full transparency, so you can put any backdrop in there that you want. I'll go and drop in one. There you go, there's Mount Fuji, and as you can see, you can actually see through this SVG. And the reason that you can do that is if you look over here, we're doing an SVG fill with a 0 0.1 white, 0 0.1 alpha white, and then a 0 0.2 alpha white on top of that. Let's go make a small change here. Let's try something, something new, so making a change. And again, we have to be yarn build. Yarn start. And that's how easy it is to put graphics into your terminal using React. It's really cool. Oh, and there's one more thing when it comes to this. You can actually go and drag this image and save it out. So if you want to actually then save that a copy of that image, you can save it and you can also see where it is. It's just really, really, really cool. Okay, let's try out two more things here. So I figured that y'all might want to do some charting. So let's try out that. So the first one is React Viz. In this case, you're bringing in the React Viz charting library. Give it some example data. Do some mapping. I actually just got all of this as a test code from React Viz. I really didn't do any real big work there at all. And then did XY plot on it. Again, I just sort of picked this up from the documentation. And then I brought in some, some body styles. And again, same sort of thing, render to Puppeteer, same sort of React SSR rendering. And let's give this a try. Let's see how uh, this, this charting looks. Nice, okay. So again, 
I did the transparency thing because I think it's just wicked cool. And other than that, it's a pretty basic bar chart. So the sort of thing that if you have some metrics that you want to watch, but you don't want to build a big page to go and do that, you can easily do that using this Sixel graphic stuff. Now, one more example for you. Okay, so this one uses RE charts as opposed to React Viz. Really the same thing. Other than that, it's exactly the same as before SSR rendering from React. But this one actually goes and does a data fetch as well. So I'm going to click on this and show you what that data looks like. It's just basically the data that was in the example, but I extracted it so that you can see what you need to do in order to make this work. So let's go back here and let's start from the beginning. So we fire up this function. It first then makes the request to that URL and then it gets the JSON payload from there. And then it uses React SSR rendering to send that data to that app component. And that's how you get the, the data from the server. And then after that, it's pretty much exactly what we've been doing in all the other examples. We bring up Puppeteer, we set the content, we wait for it, we screenshot it, and there you go. So let's give it a try. Nice. Another beautiful graph right in your terminal, right where you want it. And of course, you can just go and grab that file. If you want to go and put it in an email and say, look, boss, here's what's happening with our servers, blah, blah, blah. So, so easy. Great tool for developers. All right. So these should be some good starter projects for you to take a look at to create your own command lines that go and put out Sixel graphics into the terminal. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned about Sixel graphics and how to implement those using React, which is really exciting and can leverage the skills that you already have, which is always cool. I love it when we can go and take the skills that we already have and leverage them in a different context like this Sixel graphics system. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section down below, as well as any projects you can come up with. I would love to see that. Feel free to like and share this video with your friends. Hit that subscribe button. And if you go to the description, you'll find a link to our newsletter, which will give you access to these videos a day earlier than everyone else, which is really exciting. You'll also find a link to the Discord server where you can just chat with us directly about this kind of stuff. But in the meantime, from me to you, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.